Well, there's nothing nothing to talk about today. Mm, I, no. I don't know. I don't even know why we're doing a show. No, no. Everything is just exactly the same as when we went to bed yesterday. No news. Nothing going on. No news. Nothing uh, yeah, exciting. Uh, hey, listen, Brian, it's been great. We'll do it's been it. great. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I just saw this headline a second ago. Something about people who don't work at Tesla anymore. Oh, how many? What's that? How many? Uh, uh, 10 percent oh, oh 10 percent yeah plus two plus two plus two plus two 14 14 000 and two or something like that mm -hmm. well, three thousand in germany alone apparently because apparently in germany you have to put in when you do layoffs like that you have to submit a form with the government and apparently the form submitted said three thousand was the headcount reduction Hmm. which is a significant percentage of the German workforce. They were only at, I think, 11.5. Okay. So that's a significant reduction in Germany. And it's an expensive reduction because you have to pay them for, I forget, 17 years. If they've worked there for three months <laughs> and you lay them off, you have it's to pay It's not quite that years. generous, but it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's like worth it a significantly, significantly cheaper than here. Yes, Cheaper than here? No, more expensive than here, you mean. Right. Yes. Uh, I meant here is cheaper. Yes, thank yes. you. <laughs> it's an early morning. I should get back All to right. my coffee. So listen, this morning on my first video on the After the Bell video, I did briefly talk about the big layoff. Uh, but let's start with the one that I think I, way, way more important than the 10% layoff. I, I, I could be wrong. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's really a nothing burger. Let's talk about the one that's getting all the attention and probably the reason the stock is down, at least maybe three of the five points that it's down. Um, Drew Baglino. How big a deal is it that Drew Baglino, after 18 years with the company, with a very forward-facing face and with uh, somebody who was appreciated and liked by the community, how important is this loss? In isolation, not important. Executives leave all the time. Uh, 18 years at a company is an outrageous amount of time to spend in one place. Uh, so Drew P. Bag of Donuts being gone. What? Uh, I, isn't that his name? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not Bag of Donuts. I thought, so Drew Baglino being gone in isolation, not super meaningful. Then we had other ones. So you have to view it outside of isolation. By itself, what he does, someone in the organization would step up and fill those shoes, uh, just like we saw with uh, other departures in the past. But this feels different. This feels uh, a little bigger in the context of the other layoffs and the second unexpected senior departure. Okay, so let's talk about Drew for another minute. And 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 actually for all such layoffs, or such, I'm not, sorry, not layoffs, such uh, losses when people leave, um, okay, so we could have some kind of unhappiness. Uh, in other words, there could be uh, either Elon unhappy with him, he unhappy with Elon, nothing to suggest anything like that going on, at least so far that we've seen. Uh, I haven't seen anything concrete that would that would tell us exactly what's going on in either direction. Okay, and the X posts that went back and forth this morning were uh, Drew saying, hey, you had a great stay, uh, been fantastic, love you guys. And Elon saying, uh, you have contributed more than most. Um, mm -hmm. Is that all you saw? Did you see more than that? That's what yeah. I, I saw the most amicable sort of departure that you would expect to see from any company. So then knowing a little bit about Drew and about his relationship with Tesla, he would have made this decision maybe months ago and would have been preparing the way. He would have been setting up his teams. He would have been finding the clear uh, replacement, uh, talking to Elon about it probably at least a month ago um, and trying to make sure that this was a smooth, smooth transition. Would that be your expectation? In isolation, if it was just him leaving, then yes, that would exactly be my expectation. When we've seen other senior executives leave in the past, it was the sort of thing where in the 
weeks or months leading up to it, there was a lot of speculation, even from the outside looking in where you would say, it feels like they're getting ready to do a transition here. And then the transition happened. And while some people were blindsided, uh, others paying attention may have not been quite as surprised. Um, I haven't seen anything that would indicate that there has been a transition underway. Um, it didn't feel that way, but it's, I wouldn't have necessarily seen it. So oh. that's not, not proof that, that it wasn't happening. Um, yeah. All right. So we, so we have a second executive leaving. I know far less about this gentleman other than to know, to, to know that he has been a very clear communicator on X and I will miss his clear uh, ways of explaining some of the things that are going on. Um, hey, maybe, maybe as a private citizen, maybe he'll continue to do that, which would be kind of interesting if he continues to be a commentator. It'd be, it, it is a great loss because between Drew and Rohan, they were the two who were doing the most communicating on behalf of Tesla. People would even joke that one or both of them were the PR department I see. Uh, because while they wouldn't respond to any request, you know, you still see articles every day. Oh, we reached out to Tesla and they didn't comment for our story. Right. 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 And I, and I envy them for having that, the ability to do that because I'd love to ignore the, the dishonest ding dongs, but uh, those two were, yeah, an invaluable resource, no matter, you know, so one person said, Oh, they're, they, maybe they, uh, maybe they're part of the 10% layoffs. No, no, these positions haven't been eliminated. You're still going to have that unless you cut the entire department, right. which you did not. Exactly. That would that would absolutely hobble the company. No, they're they're still those roles still exist. They'll just be done by someone else. So on those, yeah, it's that one came as a much bigger surprise. Um, you noticed you were the first to actually get out ahead of this and say, uh, Hey man, his check mark is missing and his Tesla affiliate badge is missing. Something's going on. <laughs> and uh I when it came out, I immediately messaged you and said, Oh, Randy, I got a topic for you. And then as I'm sending it, I see that you've published a video that's already getting ahead of it. So that was brilliant work on your part and lucky. Yeah, uh, but, lucky. That's what it was. Yeah. But they had uh yeah, so Rohan is gone. His departure notice was a little different than Drew's. I don't know if you read the whole tweet. I did. I did see what he said. Yeah. Go ahead. And well, said. well, uh, he mentioned, he mentioned that he is the child of immigrants and that he worked in the Obama administration and campaign. And to me, that almost feels like a hint saying, look, we're, we're both immigrants here. Can we not take the kind of hardline approach we have on immigration when we're both immigrants. And if Elon's really that concerned about immigrants coming over here and having too many babies, I know a guy who's had 11. <laughs> so uh, may, but I, I thought it was, I don't know, maybe it's posturing for a next job. He wants to remind people that he was someone important uh, before Tesla. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, but that seemed like an interesting inclusion that you would mention. Um, yeah. You know, so, and with so, he may, so there may be, uh, he may have been uncomfortable with the politics. Is that what you're trying to tell me? He may have. Yeah. There are people who, uh, it, it is, it is get, getting more difficult to uh, address people's concerns regarding Elon shenanigans as the years go on. Um, it used to be that when you would talk about Tesla, people would say nerd. And now they say things that are less kind. Uh, so they're, I don't mind being called a nerd. When I was in high school, nerd was a bad word. Right. And within like five years, it became a good word because those guys all got rich. Right. <laughs> and, and they you got didn't... the girls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got your girls. I don't know if that's quite how it works, but they, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. There's, I, I don't know if that played any part of it. But it was interesting uh, that he mentioned it, yes. It was interesting that he mentioned it. Here's what I think is, is also likely, is that Elon came out and said, 8-8, big reveal. Mm -hmm. 
And eights are lucky numbers in Chinese. So that's my theory on why that particular date. I've seen people try and draw other inferences. I don't think those make sense. It was also four months out, like I think to the day or the, or very close to it. Um, I'm sure he had a particular day of the week he wanted it and all that. I think he wanted it on a Thursday so that the market could react on Friday. Mm. So uh, I think what happened when you put a date that far out, it means you don't have the product ready to go. If it was ready to go, you'd have said two weeks. That's how Elon rolls. And so I think what could have happened is that Elon said, here's, listen, guys, listen, here's the plan. We're going to do this, this, and this for that presentation. And some of these senior people pushed back and said, my gosh, that's, you're asking us, you're hoping that we can perform a miracle. Maybe we can. You know what? I've been here 18 years. I'm going to let you deal with this. I'm going to let you uh, put all those pieces together because that's a lot of pieces. And I've seen people saying, well, I'm not worried. Tesla still attracts the best engineers. I'm not worried about the engineering. Well, yes, they, well, I, I'm sure everyone works together great. I'm not worried about the work environment. It's the leadership. And my concern is that it, I'm concerned that he's pushing out people who have the capacity to push back on some of his more uh, unrealistic ideas. And it's clear that he likes to surround himself with people who share his views. Uh, he recently shared that he doesn't get notifications from anyone unless he follows them. They follow him back. And they're, I mean, he had every check mark ticked. And that is how you create an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. So when he's got a crazy idea, it doesn't get challenged. Mm -hmm. And you can debate which ideas are the crazy ones and which ones are the brilliant ones but it's impossible to have a hundred percent success rate on ideas you just came up with and without qualified people you trust to stand in as the voice of reason, you can make mistakes. And it was my hope. It was my belief. Elon had told us we are past the point of having a, a bet the company moment. Model three was a bet the company moment. Model Y was not. The refreshes were not, the Cybertruck has not been, the factories have, none of those have been bet. Even, even things as ambitious as the Optimus bot, that's not betting the company. If Optimus, if tomorrow the world decided bots are illegal, great, write it off and move on. Wouldn't, it would suck, but it wouldn't kill the company. Right. Whereas taking the steering wheel out on a, platform that may not be ready could be betting the company okay well that was pretty grim altogether <laughs> for a well, we haven't talked about, about the comedian. well okay if you want my honest take then i think cool. rohan and andrew have left just like the spacex executive did to have elon's twins I think that's, that's what's that going must, on. That must be it. <laughs> that's going around. You All know right. how much money you make doing that? Oh. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, clap back. Here's a couple of my thoughts and response. Yeah. Okay, number I'm one ready. is I think that a company like Tesla, you're gonna have top executives leaving all the time. They're gonna be they're gonna be wooed away. They're going to actually get together in some back room and hatch a scheme for a brand new company. Oh, that hasn't happened to Tesla. Um, and uh, there, even his best friends have left him to start, I don't know, something called Redwood. And, um, and uh, but now that guy's back on the board. Uh, some of them are going to need a break because it is an intense, incredibly intense space to work in. I've seen this with other companies like that. In the bicycle industry, you've probably even heard of Specialized Bicycle Company. They were well known for just ripping the hearts out of employees, but everybody that worked at Specialized became top people in the industry and always talked about how great it was to work at Specialized. You've got the same environment exactly at Tesla where people are, they go in there, they get run over by the intensity of the working environment, but they turn out to be people that can take their resume anywhere and start companies, borrow money, 
um, or, or go to work for somebody else. So, uh, you know, if you look at the specifics of the of the uh, note uh, from the other part of the specific that that uh, was on the note from Rohan was that he is going to, let me see, I've lost it. Can't find it, but I will get it. Oh, here we go. My plans are to recess monitor, recess monitor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to recess monitor my second grade daughter, <laughs> practice my violin, go to a bunch of bucket list sporting events and take my very patient wife on some long intended travel. So, you know, it may be that uh, the family was getting a little burned out on his hours and his uh, intensity with regard to his work, work pace and that the family asked him to please take a breather. So there's a whole bunch of possibilities there. And you might say, and I'm going to let you have that opportunity now, that it's not a coincidence that the layoffs and these two people leaving happened at the same time. And probably the market is wondering that. And I'm going to say it's probably a coincidence, but go ahead. I think all of those are completely valid. I think what will happen for both of them is they will finally sleep in. Now, I don't think these executives have been working 14 hours a day every day for 18 years, um, but they certainly put in their share of 12 to 14 to 18 hour days. Uh, that grinds you into a paste. There's only so much of that you can do. And I can see them taking three months, six months, a year to decompress, breathe, check out Bali. I hear it's nice. Uh, then uh, Bali? Anyway, Bali, yes. I've never been, but <laughs> clearly. But uh, they're both too young to retire. Mm -hmm. So what they do next is anything they want. Um, they are still, you know, if, if they come back in a year uh, and and yeah, you can write your own check at that point. And that's what I imagine they will do. Uh, but it is, yeah, it is an absolute, uh, a meat grinder. And uh, I don't know at what age I would have had to have started to have been able to put in 18 years at, in a pace like that. I'd say mid twenties, maybe, but it's really tough. So all of those could, but the fact that they both happen on the same day is just odd, but probably coincidental. Um, let's talk about the layoffs then happening at the exact yes. same time, but let's talk about the layoffs. Um, uh, one thing is that this has happened uh, at least five times before, as reported by several on X today. Uh, the most recent one was just about a year and uh, two months ago um, when Elon laid off about 10% of the workforce and got absolutely lauded. I mean, for for a press that normally just wants to tear apart anything that he does, when he did this layoff last year, the press was like, yes, this is the thing to do. How come tech hasn't been doing this? And then Meta laid off and they're like, Elon's a genius. You see, he led and not Mary. She didn't lead. It was Elon actually leading all the time. And, uh, you know, that's what you need to do. And then people started pointing to some of the famous people like General Electric and others who have said, you need to lay off 10% every year, especially mm -hmm. if you're growing, because you've got these people that come in that are just not well suited. They're just not a fit. Uh, they may be phenomenal people, but they're not a fit for the environment like Tesla. And so you give them their opportunity to go find where they do fit. And uh, at the same time, you give your company an opportunity to cut uh, unnecessary uh, 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 expense uh, and then start to fill in in a more appropriate way going forward. And uh, this is a great business model, one that I totally agree with. Certainly, I, I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't necessarily do it purposefully at my company. We were seasonal. And so every, right. November, so every yeah. November, I got to cut 10%. <laughs> yes. And that's, and that works great for Costco does the same thing. They do their seasonal hires. Right. And if you're good, they yeah. hire you. Yes. Uh, and you also see that, you know, uh, I've worked in factories like that mm -hmm. where the summer hires come in and, you know, if, if you're good, uh, they keep you past the the fall. And at the plating plant, I want to say our layoffs were probably every three months. Wow. And, it, and, and the layoffs were 
just cleaning house. Yep. I honestly believe it had, they, they'd come in and say, oh, you know, the, the JIT order we had, um, they're not going to be using us for as many parts. We got layoffs. Right. Well, right. But they're seasonal too. So, I mean, some, we still have the same total volume. There was always an excuse. Right. So, uh, Tesla did that big layoff. 10% was huge, but at the same time, they were still hiring because while it's important to cut from one side, yes. you need to add to the other. The analogy I drew on X this morning was, wait, you're telling me I need to lose weight, but you also want me to gain muscle mass. Muscle mass is heavier than fat dummy. Uh, yeah, you should do, do that though. That's what you need to do. I get, um, yeah. They're absolutely yeah. hiring in Chile. They're hiring in India. You know. <laughs> they're they're hiring an AI, but yeah. laying off somewhere else. Middle managers, you can always probably cut a middle manager or fifty. <laughs> um, yes, but right, just replace them with a lava lamp and a <laughs> suggestion box that no one checks. It's the same thing, and so yeah, Tesla led. They they were the first doing these huge layoffs at a time when it didn't seem like they needed to. And then Apple and Google and Meta all realized, and really it was the the Twitter layoffs, now X, no. that that right. yes. that they said, wait, you you let go 70, 80 <laughs> percent of your of your engineers and the site broke once for 20 minutes. Right. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. And yeah, you can say Mary led, but only because Elon Gold and Mary led. That's I all I can say. I so see. yeah, no, that's layoffs. I was expecting a stock bump today because yeah. Wall Street does love it. You said they get good coverage for it. They do because all the analysts love it. And the analysts are most of the engine behind the financial stories. Uh, but then at the same time, we saw, well, and the FSD being half off, I was concerned. I, I was curious to see if that would be a positive or a negative to the market. But then losing two executives this morning, not ideal. I think so, that was the combination. I think the combination is why the stock is down this morning. Because uh, the I don't know is the is the market continue to be up this morning I think uh, yeah even the market is finally uh, uh, lost the uh, Nasdaq's down seventy seven so you have uh, maybe the a little bit of the of the downward trend on Tesla today is the overall market the bond market the uh, yields were way up this morning like twelve basis points um, so that's a negative for Tesla so I think you've got a a, a mixed bag a mixed basket of negatives this morning that are all impacting, all of which to me should be short term. Now, none of us care about, you know, what happens to the market on a day-to-day -day basis, unless you still have dry powder, this might be a day <laughs> to buy in. We're gonna do another video here in just a few minutes that you can watch tomorrow. We are going to list the multiple ways where Elon Musk is clearly still firing Oh, you can't say on all cylinders anymore. What do you say now? Mm, juicing on all electrons. Juicing mm. on all his electrons. Anyway, we're, we're the <laughs> entrepreneur of the millennia, the entrepreneur maybe of all time, is um, just kicking it every single company all across the board. And we'll go down a list, not only at Tesla, but elsewhere where the leadership is so clear any last thoughts with regard to these layoffs and the and the two uh, execs that have just left uh it's not the end of the world yeah. um exact you know that's the whole point of having a machine that works in the way that it does that's the whole point of bringing all those executives on stage at investor day is to see that it's not a one-man show that there that there is a whole team and when we've seen others leave in the past, there were successors in line behind them to step up and fill that role. People who already knew the job, knew what to do, and uh, and have done it awfully well. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, this does not change my long-term outlook. No. It's just disappointing. That's right. It's hard to take. Well, listen, I don't normally uh, put up a card on on the show that I do with you. But last night, there was a video that I did my normal Monday morning video that was chock full of really cool stuff, none of which I wrote. 
it was other people's stuff. I just commented on it, but it was stuff that if you are interested in the economy, where the economy is going, how it'll impact the stock market, how it might impact Tesla, this was one of the better of the Monday morning shows that is recorded on Sunday night. Uh, and so I'll put the card right there. Other than that, hey. I think you're putting everyone. the card all the way over here. Oh, <laughs> I have no idea. I for it took me the longest time to even figure out whether it was on my right or my left, but it is on my left. But I don't know if it's on your left. Hmm. Uh yeah. We'll see. We will. Tell us in the comments. <laughs> that was, that's right. Let us know. It's been great talking to you, Brian, as always. And even better talking to y'all out there. <laughs>